The Honda Grom. It doesn't really solve any problems. It's fun, but it's limited to nine horsepower of fun. Even on my relatively short commute to work where there's no speed limits faster than 45 miles an hour, I'm usually at wide open throttle from stoplight to stoplight with its little engine screaming like an angry leaf blower. There's something to be said for riding a slow bike fast, and this is a slow bike that is fun to ride fast, but it needs to be a little bit faster. It needs a bigger engine. It needs a 250. The Grom needs more power, but just a little bit. Maybe we'll go from 9 to, I don't know, 25, maybe 30? Some people go even bigger, throwing 400, 500, or 700 cc engines in these things. Some guy went full crazy and put a 205 horsepower Ducati engine in one of these things, which won't actually work. It would shear the rear axle and wad up the swing arm like a used tissue. But I digress. A little more power. What you need is a 250 or 300cc engine, specifically a Honda CBR250R or 300R or 300F or even a Rebel 300 engine. I'm going to use a 250 because I found a good one for cheap. Essentially it's the same process for any of the Honda NC51 or MC41 engines, so if you're doing this with a 300, anytime I say 250, just pretend I'm saying 300. It might be tempting to save some money and just buy the engine, but you really need so many parts from the 250 that you should really just buy the whole bike. From the donor, you'll need the engine, the radiator, the radiator fan, throttle body, wiring harness, a bunch of sub harnesses like the headlight and battery relay, the ECU, the handlebar controls, uh, dash, ignition boot, etc., etc. So it's just easier and cheaper if you buy the whole bike. Basically, all of the other things you need, you can just buy from a company called Steady Garage. Some of the stuff you can fabricate yourself and save money, but most of it's worth just buying. Here's what I bought. If you don't have a welder, you might want to also get the radiator and the exhaust. I've done a handful of other engine swaps, and while this is not trivial, it is by far the easiest I've ever done. It doesn't require any special tools. There isn't any fabrication you need to do. If you've done some engine swaps before, you could do this half drunk, which is pretty much how I did it. Okay, here are the basic steps. Pretty simple, right? Let's break it down into some more discrete steps. This seems like a lot, but it's all pretty easy and it's pretty quick. The only thing that actually takes time is getting the wiring harness in there and plugging everything in. So the first thing I did was disassemble the 250. This was super easy and accomplished in mere seconds, as you can see. The only thing that was a pain in the ass is the electrical connector under the fuel tank was kind of hard to get to. I ended up just cutting that connector off, which was fine because when you swap it into the Grom, you actually need to lengthen that connector anyway. We'll get to that later, but feel free to cut the connector when removing the fuel tank. Drain the coolant, unplug all the connectors, remove the engine bolts, lower the engine either with a jack or just muscle it down, it's not that heavy. Next up, do the same with a Grom. This is also easy, especially with power tools and a friend. Again, remove the plastics, the connectors, the chain, motor mounts, and the coolant hoses. Just kidding, there's no coolant hoses. Don't forget to take the chain off. There's probably a master link for this, but I have these bolt cutters that I never get to use, so I'm going to use them. This is also a good time to swap out the front sprocket for the new one. It's held on with this little plate. The plate is bolted to the sprocket, and it has some teeth that kind of engage on the countershaft groove. Probably a good time to swap out the rear sprocket, too. You'll need to pull the wheel off. Be sure to torque these four bolts back down to spec, or just use an impact if you're feeling lucky. Here's where I did something kind of stupid. I put the 250 in before I took the Grom harness off. This is a problem because the 250 kind of captures the wiring harness. Then I got real lazy, and instead of taking the engine out to pull the wiring harness out, I just cut it, which is real stupid because if I want to use this engine again on some other crazy project, I'm going to have to buy another wiring harness. So just beware, you need to take the harness out before you put the engine in. To get the engine in the Grom, you'll need a bracket. You could probably fabricate one yourself, but I highly recommend throwing money at this. I'm usually a big fan of building instead of buying, but this bracket is well worth the $180. The spacers are kind of important, so keep an eye on where they are when you take it out of the box, because that's how they go into the engine. Take the middle spacers out and put those in the Grom first. They should be a tight fit, so you might need a hammer to tap them in. They'll stay in place while you install the engine. The short spacers all go on the right side, except for the really short one that goes on the left side between the frame and the bearings. One of the frame plates is going to go along here, between the spacers here and here. There's a welded sleeve that goes in here. The other side of the frame just goes on the outside. To get the engine in, you'll need to take the right rear set completely off and loosen up the left rear set. There's a bolt that runs through that holds both rear sets on, and it also holds the swing arm on, so make sure not to pull the bolt all the way out, otherwise you're going to lose your swing arm. 
Then just lift the engine up, line up the top center bolt hole, and run a bolt through it. Put the rest of the bolts and spacers in. I left the bolts loose at this point and tightened them up later, but if I was gonna do this again, I'd probably just tighten them now. It's a lot easier to get to them before you get all the other stuff on there. There is a bolt that needs to be oriented the correct direction, this one right here. If you have it like I have it with a nut on the left side, the chain will rub against it. This is bad. I had to take everything apart after I had it together and it was kind of a pain in the ass. So go ahead and install it the right way now. You want the bolt head on the chain side and the nut on the other side. You have to space out the right rear set. You can just do this with a couple of washers. You also need to modify the brake lever to clear the engine. I did this gently and carefully with a hammer. You might have noticed that the engine doesn't go on if you have the throttle body attached. I maybe should have mentioned that earlier. You need to take the throttle body off and between the engine and the throttle body, you need to use this little elbow that came with your bracket. This relocates the throttle body off to the side and it's really the only way to get the throttle body on there without seriously modifying your frame. It comes with some drawbacks. The fuel injector is not in the correct location and uh, we'll talk about that later. If you remember from earlier in the video, I tried installing the engine with the elbow and the throttle body attached. It's kind of a pain in the ass to do that. So I just pull it off, shove a paper towel in the intake port to keep stuff from getting in there, install it, and then put the elbow and the throttle body on. The rubber elbow is kind of a janky way to attach the throttle body to the engine. So I recommend fabricating some sort of strap to hold it to the frame or the engine. You'll need a filter for this. K&N has a pod filter that works. This is the part number. You can also, if you're feeling dangerous, just use a screen filter. Install and adjust the clutch cable. It'll be adjusted all the way out on both the engine side and the lever side. It barely fits, but it does fit. Install the throttle cables. Again, you'll need to adjust the cables all the way out. Now it's time to put the 250 wiring harness in. This is the only real time consuming part. I started at the middle at the throttle body. Reconnect all the plugs to the engine. The only two I had to extend were the fuel tank plug and the ignition coil wires. You need to put the spark plug boot from the 250 onto the Grom ignition coil. You can just unscrew the one from the Grom and then screw on the one from the 250. You can also just swap over the whole coil and wire assembly if you want. It's the same coil between the two bikes. Shove the excess wires in the glove box and behind the headlight and wherever else it needs to go. Zip tie everything down. You'll need to also buy the headlight adapter for the 2017 and up Grom to use the factory headlight. I used the left side handlebar controls from the CBR because the Grom pigtail wasn't long enough. And for the right side, I just took apart the controls and looked at what each of the wires did and then took the one off the CBR and looked at what those wires did. And then I just sort of made jumper wires between the two so that I could use the controls from the Grom. If I was gonna do this again, I would probably just use the handlebar controls from both sides from the CBR. It's way easier. I definitely recommend you do that. If you have a CBR300F, the Grom dash will plug right into your harness. If you don't and you want to use the Grom dash, you'll need to cut the plug off the wiring harness and rewire it. I found this wiring pen out online to help rewire, but I didn't use it, so I can't verify that it's correct. I just used the dash from the 250. It's kind of ugly. I'll probably switch it out eventually, but it works for now. I made a bracket to hold it onto the bike and just plugged it in. This dash is also nice because it has a temperature gauge on it. It also gives the correct RPMs all the way to redline, which the Grom dash doesn't do. Some of you are wondering what to do with the fuel system. Do you take the pump out of the CBR and stick it in the Grom somehow? Well, it turns out you don't actually need to. The pump in the Grom is totally fine for a 250 or a 300. It's a little weird. The bike makes nine horsepower, but the pump can handle up to 30. It's fine. It's easier for us. All we need to do is extend that plug on the 250 harness and extend the fuel line. The fuel line extension takes a little bit of work, but it's kind of easy. Basically, you need to remove the ends from the 250 fuel line, just cut off the little metal clamps that are on there and pull the fuel line off. Then you'll need to go to your auto parts store and get some 5 16 inch fuel line. It's technically eight millimeters, but 5 16 is almost exactly eight millimeters and it's way easier to find. Cut it to the right length, put the ends of the 250 on that, put some hose clamps on it, and you're good to go. For some reason, the Grom key has two switches in it, but you only need one, so just grab two of these wires and ignore the other two. You'll need to wire in a Zener diode. I don't think you need to do this if you're running an aftermarket ECU, but I'm not sure. The diode needs to be about 3.9 volts. You can just search for this part number and buy that. Make sure you have the diode oriented in the correct direction. I'm not sure why this diode is needed. It's some security feature, apparently. <laughs> 
The radiator. I used the radiator from the 250 and welded up some new mounts to it. This is pretty easy if you have a welder and you can weld aluminum. If not, don't worry. This is another thing you can just throw money at. Steady Garage will sell you a radiator with the correct mounts already on it. The plastics can be trimmed a bit to fit better, but I just cut a small area for the fill cap and the rest kind of just squeezes out of the way. You might be able to modify the CBR hoses to work if you cut them and adjust them and maybe use some unions, but I just bought the preformed hoses. It's a lot easier, I recommend that. Now sounds like a pretty good time to test start the engine, just to make sure everything is hooked up. There is no exhaust, so it will sound kind of like a robot sharding. Yay! The 250 uses a 520 chain, which is recommended because the Grom's 420 chain is a weak little baby chain. With a new chain, you'll need new sprockets, and since the wheel sizes are different, you'll need a new ratio. I did some spreadsheet math and determined that to get to the same ratio that the CBR has, you'll need a 15 tooth front sprocket and a 32 tooth rear sprocket. This will give you the same top speed as a CBR with the correct speed readout on your dash. If you're not using this sprocket ratio, you'll need to get a speedometer correction. You can get these for about 75 bucks and they're really easy to set up. This is another thing you might not need if you're using an aftermarket ECU. EGR block off plate, you can buy one of these for like 30 bucks, but I decided to get clever and modify the existing one by tapping the outlet and plugging it with an NPT plug. Turns out this is not actually a great idea because it's too tall and it interferes with the radiator fan. I guess I'm not that clever. I ended up making a flat one out of some aluminum that I had lying around. You need a new exhaust. You can buy a custom header that works for this and you just put on your own muffler. You can only do this if you don't live in California. They won't ship it to California addresses. I guess if you have a friend out of state, you can ship it through them. I live in California, but that's fine because I own a welder, so I just cut up and welded a temporary exhaust to get things rolling. I know, it looks like total garbage. It's also too low, I scraped it on the first time I took the bike out. I'll figure out something else later, but it works for now. Before you put the body back on, you're going to want to remember to tighten all those motor mount bolts that you left loose. In fact, just check every single bolt. Now is the time for a test ride. Hop on, turn on the key. All right, the dash comes on, that's all good. Press the start button, give a little gas. These things don't like to idle, more on that in a minute. Now go ahead and shift into first and, aw, oh, did you forget to put the shift lever on? You dumbass. You can't ride without a shift lever? All right, no big deal, put the shift lever on real quick. Let's try that again. And if everything was put together, everything should go well. You'll notice a whining noise when I let off the throttle. That's normal. That's those roller bearings that came with the kit. The bearings are there to keep the chain from riding on the frame. Now we need to put the rest of it back together. The intake will need a little bit of a hole cut out of the bodywork. I just kind of held up the body about where it was supposed to be, marked the center of the throttle body, cut a hole a little bit smaller than I needed, and then I put it back on and sort of finished it off with a Dremel. And before we put the tail on, there's one more thing we need to do. So final thing, ECU. You kind of need to get the ECU retuned. I haven't done this, I'm still running on the stock tune. It's not great, there's definitely more power than the Grom, but there's a lot left in there. That's kind of a whole video anyway, so I'll just say you might wanna get your ECU tuned, or you might wanna just be lazy like me and ride it around like this for a while. One additional thing, the fuel injector. The fuel injector location is not ideal. Remember when I told you this thing doesn't idle very well? Well, with that bend in the intake between the throttle body and the engine, the fuel doesn't atomize correctly at low RPMs, and the bike kind of just sucks below about 4,500 RPM. I fixed this by designing a metal angle that replaces the silicone tube that comes with the kit. This puts the injector right near the engine so it can spray directly behind the intake valves. It doesn't seem a whole lot better, but that might just be because I haven't gotten the ECU tune yet. You need a really tight bend. I got mine from a stainless steel donut. You'll need a one and three quarter inch outside diameter bend with a maximum bend radius of one and three quarters of an inch. Cut a 90 out of the donut, lay that an injector boss, weld on some all thread, put a little dent in there to clear the frame. Whoa, buddy, I thought you said this didn't require any fabrication. What's this lathing and welding? Well, good news, about the time I was finishing up mine, someone started selling these things. I can't speak to their product specifically, but it's probably worth buying if you're trying to get maximum power out of your engine. That's it, you now have a Gromzilla. Go to your local DMV, get your custom Gromzilla license plate, take it out on a nice shakedown ride along the coast, take in the beautiful sunset and the feeling of a job well done.
Do you like your automotive ideas half-baked and questionably good? If so, hit that subscribe button, because I have a lot of them. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, and thanks for watching.